Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be taking a look at some bad habits that might be holding your jungling back and preventing you from becoming the ascended forester that you've always dreamed of being. You want to carry, win and climb? You want to just get better at the game? Then you really need to think about implementing these underused tips. Throughout my coaching sessions as well as watching games on Discord and seeing some things that kind of horrify me a little bit, these are some of the most common mistakes and tips that people aren't using even if they're aware of them. They might be thinking about them but all the way up until Platinum these are definitely not being used consistently enough and you might even see some of them trickle into diamond so if you enjoy this video and you're interested in ascending your jungling please consider leaving a like and of course subscribing head to the gameplay channel for all the mundo and champion goodness that you might need coaching and patreon are linked in the description below and now without hesitation let's improve so first up and this is something i've been seeing a lot and I don't know why it's happening. I can see on streams, I can see in games, I can see from my scouting of all elos, I see from the coaching. Why are people taking so long to gank? And no, I don't mean, you know, taking a long time to do your route and going into ganking. That's obvious. We need to make sure that is pristine. But there's this bad habit of simply waiting around, looking at the gank and expecting it just to fly into your mouth. It's like sitting at a bar expecting someone to go out with you, except you want to sit there and have everyone come to you. I mean, that'd be great, but we're not all Thor. And it's not only that, it's also the use of spells, the timing, the approaching angles, over patience. I understand we talk about patience in jungling and how important it is, but it's like so many junglers are simply waiting for the aliens from Scientology to come back and collect them. But this isn't what I'm seeing, and this is honestly one of the biggest differences between someone in low elo, mid elo, and high elo, is their ability to assess a gang, go in, get it just right, hit your spells, and now you've got a lead for your team. And it's not only just taking their time to gank, taking too long, waiting for cooldowns and not understanding what's going on. It's also that they do questionable things that basically mean the gank didn't do anything. You actually come out worse for wear than when you went for the gank in the first place. Let's look at some examples. The Sejuani decides I'm going to clear the jungle and gank mid lane. Great, thumbs up. Sejuani goes to the mid lane. Sejuani sits. Sejuani eats the Poro snack instead of feeding it to the Poro. The Akali is waiting for the Sejuani to go in to help kill the Silas. The Sejuani doesn't want to. The Silas then turns on the Akali and kills her. Sejuani doesn't use a flash, misses her Q, misses the W. Now it has to flash to try and get her E proc, but it's not enough because Udi is there, as we would have known from the early starting roots. Flashes and stuns her. She dies. The center support rotates to try and assist. She dies. It's an absolute travesty. Let's look at it again, but using Silas on the bottom left, you'll see his abilities. Silas and Akali battle it out with their fists, chains, and knives. Kind of kinky. And the Sejuani shows up in their bush. Freeze frame. The Silas has 7 on Q, 11 seconds on W, 6 seconds on E, and 248 HP. Don't waste your time, simply go in. You will 100% burn his flash, if he uses it too soon you could follow up. It's an absolute free gank to at the very least burn sums and help your Kali get a good handle on the mid lane. So Juani waits so damn long that Silas's spells all come off cooldown, he's able to outtrade the Akali. Our friendly neighborhood jungler messes all her spells up, doesn't save the Akali, and basically now, the game is almost doomed. Silas got two kills, I have no idea what she was doing. Basically, this ruins the Akali's game, the Silas takes over, and of course there are factors in coming back into the game, but what is going on here? Simply go in, make the play, win the game. And really, this is going to be the main first section. I want to talk about your ganking protocols, why you do what you do, how long you should wait, what angles you should take. It really isn't difficult, and there's really a lot of bad habits around ganking that is forcing junglers to look really bad and preventing you from getting leads that could simply win lanes and win games. What about this example? The Volibear does a 5 camp top crab. It would have been really easy to know that the enemy jungler started blue and went down. This Volibear didn't realize that, wastes his time counter jungling, sees Kale as being pushed somewhat onto the tower mid lane. Again, we have an Akali. He thinks he's Elise here and he thinks his mid lane is a Talon. Free wave clear nerf, of course. No, it's an Akali. She uses a few spells and she has to wait 18 years to use them again. She has energy depletion. What is she going to do to push a Kale right into the tower in this exact situation in enough time that the wave can crash so the Volibear can actually get off a feasible dive? It's a silly play. But instead of just going, you know what, I'm not going to do this, it's dumb, he decides to fully commit when the wave isn't really fully on the tower and now he has to flash out. That flash could be kind of useful in your other fights, in your other gangs. I refuse to accept that this was the best assessment you could have for a gang as a volleyball early. So while this wasn't as tragic as the Sejuani example, he was waiting for a gank he shouldn't have taken and then committed anyway. So that's loaded. Look at the Shin example. The enemy jungler took a dragon. He decided to wall hop, it's control warded, and instead of saying, whoa, hold up a second, the enemy bottom lane has push, which means as soon as I show, they're going to retreat. If I go counter jungling, they're going to collapse me and die. No, he goes and sits in the plant and waits in a dangerous position when his bottom lane doesn't have prior, when the enemy bottom lane knows exactly where he is. What are you waiting for? Then he waffles around some more before deciding to leave. Well, great use of time. 
Please don't do any of these things. You should be able to assess the gang before you approach it. You need to know what lanes are actually gankable and you should not waste too much time when you know that the enemy knows where you are or if they have cooldowns that are on cooldown. Abuse those things, be fluid in your pathing and make sure your ganks are beautiful and smooth. I'm also seeing extreme situations which connects to your pathing where junglers simply wait in quadrants of the side of the map for like 90 seconds, 120 seconds, over 2 minutes. It's really, really strange. You'll see here fiddlesticks hanging around the bottom side, simply looking for play, looking for play. If you have to wait this long and your support ends, you cannot simply wait around here. On the other side, you're also seeing a volleyball do the exact same thing. Sometimes, guys, it's okay to understand that the play isn't going to be made. Reset, go to the other side of the map where that tempo advantage is. If there's no objectives, follow your quadrant clearing. Don't waste so much time looking for a gang, looking for something to happen. If you have to wait two minutes and you get no camps in that time, then you misread the situation. And misreading situations that leads to bad plays by junglers is the second bad habit in this video. You're seeing highlights of a Warwick decide to help his bottom lane ganking, but did he really? He shows up for a cleanup kill and gives a Civ a blue buff. He shows up for a cleanup kill and gives a buff over to the Lux. You'd think that'd be the end of it, but it wasn't because he came back and, and died again. So, tragic. Whereas this Silver Lee Sin decided I'm gonna gank top lane. And he does so with great success. Thumbs up. Borat is happy for him, but then he goes back down into the river, doesn't realize that the vein has TP, and gets collapsed upon 2v1 in the river, looking for some kind of counter jungling, looking for the crab which was already dead. This kind of play really transcends every single MMR range, but it is such a big problem for Platinum Below, Low Diamond and Below. These invades continually have bad repercussions when you don't track every single lane and the enemy jungler because you're dying for no reason. You're off the map. The enemy can now have advantages. Forget the fact that you give kills when you die. Forget the fact that they might be able to get an objective, a dragon. If you have a losing lane and you simply camp the other side of the map, and you decide, you know what, I'm going on an invade here, and oh wait, I'm dead to the enemy ADC. And then, you know, you do it again and you die to the enemy ADC again. If your bottom lane was the one that was camped, like in the examples you're seeing, and you camp top lane to help your top laner, you cannot afford to go on these deep dive invades when they will have prior. Don't go on invades where you can simply be a collapse upon and killed for no reason. It's very easy to look at the lanes, and basically if you scan when you go on these approaches, if you go somewhere after a gank and they can see you, you're basically inviting trouble. But mostly, also don't screw over lanes that you already ignored by just feeding them even more because of clueless invades. Your invading needs to be well thought out, used with prior advantages that you can win 1v1, maybe you can get out, you have to make all the assessments necessary with your pathing before you go on these adventures. And secondly, I'm going to reiterate something when you might be in a losing game or simply being invaded for whatever reason, please when you respawn, don't go back to where you just died. Or even if you have a bad situation and you see the enemy jungler topside, don't walk into their trap, especially if they have prior. I know you want that crab as one and yes, you got it, but you also died. I know you want that blue buff as Nidley, but you died. I know as Viego, you just got collapsed upon in the top river. Why are you going to your grump? I have a section on the gameplay channel which I just addressed with this exact kind of scenario, and with a Viego no less. Uh, you have to give up that grump. Please, please, please. Ladies and gentlemen, give up the grump here. Hmm? Too many times, but it's my gromp, I need my gromp. But they've warded and they keep trying to take it away. And you know what? Let's just go down. We're gonna have a red buff up, a bottom lane is, is reset, a Kali's there. Sometimes it really is okay to let your gromp go free. He will come back, I promise you, with elevated experience and gold. He will evolve and be even more beautiful than he currently is. Go to the other side, take his gromp, take his crab, take the dragon, gank your bottom lane, take your raptors and krugs if none of that is possible, and then lane gank the bottom lane. You have a lot of things you could do if you die topside and you know the enemy jungler is there. But that's the third bad habit. Bad pathing practices. And this influences entire phases of your game, whether it's your ganking, objective flow, simply moving around the map. In short, waffling with no purpose. It is the worst thing for junglers, especially in low and mid elo. You want to get diamond, you want to get gold, you want to get plat? Then this is one of the most important things you need to fix. Look at this as one. What is happening that you think is bad? Maybe nothing. I don't know, she took her camp, she took her crab, she's going topside. Yeah, but look at it from the center's perspective of her bottom lane. They cleared out a control ward. It's pretty obvious it most likely is actually warded. And if you don't have a scanner up and you're not sure, why would you sequence down, then go back into your jungle and go to the opposite side of the map if you inherently know that one, you can gank the bottom lane very easily, two, you know that the enemy jungler might be sequencing there, and three, vision control is known. Let me show you what Canyon did on the gameplay channel. I know I used it in a video recently, but look at this. He simply walked through the river in the fog of war, eed over a wall, used a plant, and now he could dive bottom lane. Why couldn't the Sichuani do something similar? 
Is that always the best play? Not necessarily, but it's something you need to be thinking about it very clearly it was not being thought about. Please track the enemy jungler, track their clearings, track what camps they're doing, make note of where they show up, because look at the same such one here earlier on in the game and it doesn't really matter what jungler you are. Yank's mid lane, doesn't get anything. Raptors are about to spawn, doesn't matter, goes to Wolves Grump, goes back into the river, goes back mid lane, and then takes the Raptors. That's a nice little circle. I don't know why it was done. And in this other game against the Sejuani, watch this Udia. Didn't pay attention to where the Sejuani was, didn't pay attention to what camps were taken, what crab was taken, when buffs were spawning. I don't know. Sure, he gets a gank off, but it's just really such random pathing with no thought out process. Make sure you have purpose, look at the advanced jungling video, look at the decision making video, look at the jungle roots video. All of those would explain to you how to assess your game plan properly so you can avoid this sort of nonsense which gives me a headache. Oh and by the way it also helps you win games, climb, have map control, have tempo advantage. That's kind of the most important part about this section. And finally a brief note, please track your objectives properly. I'm really sick and tired of junglers with Elder Dragon coming up 22 seconds. He goes back to base and now they can set up, they can engage, they can ward, they can control. That's really bad. If this goal for Volibear here from a coaching section can get ganks off on the top side, he can then go back to base with enough time to get to the dragon and his whole team understands this, groups together, wins a fight and secures it, then I'm sure anyone else in any elo can do the same thing. If you don't go back in time, you don't get there to set up, to have vision control, to make the first trap, to make the first pick, you're basically putting yourself in a position to simply be killed and lose the objective ping pong. They might even have soul point. Purely because you didn't go back in time. Purely because you didn't pay attention to what you needed to do in order to actually get the objective. Or you get a gank in the mid lane, think you're an amazing player, you hop over the plant, you clear the ward and you die. Because you didn't pay attention to the fact that bottom lane has prior. And much like the Shin example earlier, it was warded so you know that they know where you are. I really had to go down the rabbit hole to look for these kind of games, you know, just clicking on links and opening games or whatever might happen. And this is an X diamond P1 Shin who does worse than the volleyball in our first example by going to the blue when there's a dragon on the map. Fortunately, his team and the Renekton are able to secure it, but I hope he enjoys the blue buff. Totally worth it. And this Silverly Sin from earlier, look at him again here. He understands that he wanted to set up for the dragon. He didn't quite get there in time. His bottle main was feeding. So he ensured that he had a two level lead so that when this dragon came up, even if he has to give it, he will be in a position to win the fight, which he does. And it allows him to carry the game later on. And they basically got four of a kind, stacked the soul and he won the game. Absolutely great seeing people in lower and mid MMRs make these great decisions, which just swing the games in their favor. And yes, it's directly from coaching sessions, but these are the players that are fixing their bad habits. They're really thinking about the four things I put in this video. To be more determined in all phases of the jungling, to have good pathing, to have good decisive ganks, to think about their purpose on the map and not waffle in circles, to make sure that they're back in time to control the objective flow so that they can have a safe and secure society. And obviously a safe and secure mental stability on your teammates as you control the map and make them jealous of your supreme skills. So there you have it, some bad habits and tips to fix them, keep these things at the forefront of your mind. They might be simple, but they're underused and it's causing junglers to give leads to enemy junglers that simply do not deserve them. It's causing your laners to tilt at you. And honestly, a lot of these are just fundamentals of jungling. But I guarantee if you fix these, you use these tips, I didn't mean it to be as ranty as it was, I'm not flaming or being overly negative, I'm just saying I'm really passionate about seeing junglers fix these things because I want to see you all carry, win and climb to raise the level of jungling to heights that have hitherto been unseen. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something, please do like, share and comment if you did. Please also eliminate the fifth bad habit which is not combing your beards with a specialized beard comb, wash that thing in the morning, make sure it's nice and soft, everyone likes to touch it, and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.